Module 5, Objective 11, discuss how neurons interact and the significance of neuronal pools. Be able to identify five patterns of neuron interactions within these neuron pools. If you consider all the neurons um, and the types of neurons within our body, we have about 10 million sensory neurons. So these are neurons that are um, coming from sense organs or they're forming sense organs. We have a half a million motor neurons, neurons that reach out and synapse at muscle, and 20 billion interneurons. Interneurons help to interpret and coordinate and plan signals coming in and out of the central nervous system. These neurons tend to form neuronal pools, and neuronal pools are um, organizational, uh, the organization of neurons in the functional groups of interconnected neurons, and each has very limited input sources and output destinations. So they may stimulate or depress parts of the brain or spinal cord, and there's five patterns as we see here. We'll go through them individually. Divergence spreads information from neur one neuron or neuronal pool to many. So here we have divergence where a single signal or action potential from one neuron can then be transmitted to uh, many. That's divergence. Um, in the opposite fashion, convergence is when several neurons synapse on a single neuron. So here you have four neurons all synapsing on one. Serial processing, this is when information moves along a single path sequentially from neur one neuron or neuronal pool to, a, to the next. Um, pain signals often run along serial processing um, to reach our consciousness. Parallel processing is when you have several neurons or neuronal pools that process the same information at the same time. And here we see examples of both. Serial processing, this is pretty much sort of what we present where one neuron uh, leads to the second, leading to the third until they reach their destination. While parallel processing starts out with a little bit of divergence, okay, where one neuron synapses with multiple, but then you have serial processing afterwards. The last pattern is reverberation, and this is when you have a collateral, uh, when your axon branches, and here we have an axon that is branching, it gives rise to a, co a collateral, and <coughs> um, the, the collateral extends back to the originator of the message while also carrying the message forward to uh, the postsynaptic cell. So. The significance of the reverberation is it forms positive feedback loops, um, which they're going to continue. Uh, that message is going to continue to circle until s some event occurs. Um, two main examples of, of positive feedback would be childbirth. So when the child grows to a certain size and, and birth is imminent, um, the stretching of the uterus causes these signals to be portrayed. And a positive feedback is going to cause the uterus to contract more and more strongly until the event occurs. And in that case, uh, it's the birth. So that is reverberation. So those are the neuronal pools. And in terms of significance, um, think about it. Let's go back to something like divergence. It uh, You're able to spread a single message to multiple um, sources just from the use of one one uh, action potential or in the case of convergence you get a lot of input which is converging onto one so if you think about summation and how summation works um, this could definitely play to the benefit of creating either that EPSP or IPSP by having a convergence style <coughs>